You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin. Ether, Solana, Doge, and more. Cryptocurrencies and digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity, provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments throughout the world's leading crypto derivatives markets. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on The Crypto Rundown. The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of crypto derivatives. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Monday. It is time to talk some crypto. Yes, it is time for the Crypto Rundown. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the THE, OptionsInsider.com, as well as from the network upon which all of you folks are mainlining these days. Hope you're having a good start to your trading week out there. Remember, you like what you hear. This show, anything else on the network, throw a like, a star, a comment, a rating, a review, all of that. And aggregate does help new people continue to discover the content. And of course, if you want to discover a little more in your lives, like, I don't know, maybe a little bit of awesome pro Q&A sessions where we touch on all sorts of issues from the world of often crypto. Crypto does make it into their crypto volatility and skew and all sorts of fun stuff. We've had Greg Magadini from this show tackling your questions on there. Many others have delved into the world of crypto and vol and skew and all sorts of fun on there. So if you like those topics that we touch on on this show in a little bit more detail, maybe you want to ask your own questions. Also want to check out Options Oddities, get awesome other exclusive content. Great giveaways. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go as we head right on into the Bitcoin Breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends, and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Bitcoin Breakdown, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down all the action in the world's leading digital asset. Yep, we're talking a little bit of the old BTC, and it's a little bit bigger this week than it was a week ago. Last week on the show was a little bit north of 67,000, 67,048 to be precise. Today, 70,791 when we kicked off the show, up a whopping 3,743 handles on the week. Uh, the high coming pretty much right now, <laughs> a little bit north of 70K as we're speaking on the week. The low came a day after our show last week. Got down to a little bit shy of 62K, 61,987. So, an impressive rebound, over 8, almost 9K from that low on Tuesday. So impressive out there in the Bitcoin land. All you holdlers are going to hold 
Going to keep driving those prices up. Let's see how that's impacting vol. And a little bit of range over there on the week. But again, we're at some pretty lofty levels right now. So it takes a lot of action, a lot of movement to sustain that. Let's see if we can keep it up. And the narrow dated contracts on the seven day vol, the answer is no. 68 and two thirds is where the weekly vol is right now. That's coming in from 73 and about a third a week ago. So still frothy, still lofty, just coming in a little bit. If we go out to our more standardized metric, 30 day vol, things looking a little bit frothier out there. 72 and a half a week ago, 76 today. So up about three and a half points. Again, we had a pretty impressive range over the past week. So not exactly surprising that we're managing to hold course out there and actually going a little bit longer term going out six months things getting even juicier 79 and a half a week ago 81 into the 80s now in the six month vol so that is fairly juicy looking out a little ways again hodlers gonna hodl gonna keep bidding up that vol as we're seeing out there they're bidding up the skew as well the answer is pretty much yes kind of depends where you look a uh, seven day skew let's start out there last week it was negative three not surprising we were swinging to the dark side during the show last week coming in the start of the show this week swinging back to the upside up about one and three quarters on the skew there so positive 1.75 on the skew out there right now a decent swing from pretty much a negative three on the show this time last week going out 30 days we were flat on the show last week this week positive three and a half so again ticking up from the dark side this time last week and going out 180 days, weirdly enough, completely unchanged. <laughs> kind of a strange one there. We were at positive six and a quarter this time a week ago. Coming in to start the show today, positive six and a quarter still. So not a lot of evolution on the six-month skew front, which is kind of fascinating. A little bit of evolution on the OI front over there on Darabit. 206,000 calls open this week, up about 6,000. And 118,000 puts open up about 4,000 as well. We are coming into the... Final week of March, of course, we usually see a lot of OI roll off the board with the end of the quarterly expiration. So I expect these numbers to take a hit on the show this time next week. What's not taking a hit, of course, is our old friend Bitto continuing its surge to the north. 32 and a quarter as of the start of the show, up about one and a half points on the week. Uh, the ADV also continuing to skyrocket. 138,000 contracts a day going up out there these days, which is, again, nothing to sneeze at. Certainly at or near the most robust that Bitto has ever been from an options volume perspective. And today, no slouch either, 142,000 contracts on the tape. So a few more ticking in right as the show started here. So already beating the ADV out there. In terms of size positions, we have the Jan 30s, 101,000 of those now. So a very popular strike, obviously, followed by 71,000 of the Jan 35s and 53,000 of the Jan 25s. All of those out of the money not too long ago. And now, listeners, with the exception of the 35s, all looking a little bit richer. In terms of today's action, we have 7,200 of the 32 calls expiring this week on the 28th going up today. So interesting stuff. Those also in the money, at least as of right now. Let's see what they were going up for earlier today, listeners. Going up for about a buck. 97 cents to about a buck 10 or so. That seems to be the range. A few of them going a little bit earlier in the morning for 40 cents. So if you got those, <laughs> you got you got the better deal, obviously, than around a buck later on in the day. But intriguing stuff out there in Bitto. Let's see if things are equally intriguing in a name. I know a lot of you are watching because it's hard to ignore. It's just moving around so much. The volume is there. Of course, talking about Mara. Back on the rampage again, 21 and a half as we're kicking off the show here. Up a little over two, about $2.10 from the show this time last week. The ADV still robust if coming in a little bit. It's down to 432000 That's still quite a bit more than what we were just talking about in names like Bitto. That's down about 40000 this time last week. And it isn't that far from VIX, which was in the 600000 not too long ago. A little over 700000 ADV now. But again, Mara... Lighten it up out there. In terms of vol, yeah, we're at about 124, it looks like, in the vol. So that seems, that seems more like it, and that would actually put it pretty much close to unched on the week here. Makes some sense why vol-wise, at least, Mara is treading some water out there, listeners. And in terms of action out there today, let's see. What is... 
What is lighting it up out there today? We've got 255,000 contracts on the tape, so it seems like it's on course to make its ADV. But again, we shall see. Only about an hour left in the session, so it might be a little bit challenging. In terms of action, the big dog, 25,000 of the April 30s, three O's. Those were in the money not too long ago or pretty close to it. Uh, these days, looking a little bit better than they were last week, obviously, but still a bit of a ways to go before they hit that 30 strike again. But again, the way Mara moves, they could be in the money by the end of the week, followed by 22,000 of the Jan 10s. Those also looking a lot better this week than they were uh, this time last week. And in terms of action out there today, what is leading the dance? 18,000 of the March 22 calls. So again, we're at about a 21 and a half right now. So those about half a dollar out of the money. Looks like they're trading around 70 cents to about a buck. That's kind of the range out there today. So intriguing stuff out there. Let's see if we can find anything else intriguing. These days, the top 10 market cap is moving and shaking, rocking and rolling. Let's see what's going on out there as we explore the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, everybody, welcome to the Altcoin Universe, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down everything, lighting it up out there in the rest of the crypto market, especially right now. We talk about the top 10 from a market cap perspective. This has been fascinating to watch over the past few months as there's quite the tussle going on, the bottom half of the top 10. That continues today, listeners. Coming in at number 10, we got Avalanche fighting its way back into the top 10. We've had so many in there. Doge has been down there, Tron, Avalanche, you name it. Seems like everyone's taken a spot, a little sojourn at the, at the number 10 spot recently. <laughs> uh, this week it is Avalanche, 21, almost 22 billion worth of market cap. Number nine, Cardano, 23 and a half billion. Number eight, our old friend Doge, back at its spot it clung to for the better part of a year, the number eight spot, before it getting kicked to the curb for a little bit. Now back all the way up. To number eight, listeners, 25, almost 26 billion with a market cap. Number seven, USD coin, 32.2 billion. Number six, XRP, 35.6 billion. Number five, Solana, 85 and a half billion. Number four, it's BNB, 88.7 billion. Number three, it's Tether, 104 billion. Number two, it's ETH, 435 billion. And the number one, in terms of market cap, in terms of mind share, in terms of just about everything, it's the old BTC. 1.3, closing in on 1.4 trillion worth of market cap. Doesn't seem like that long ago, listeners, we were saying, man, if we can just get back to the 1T level, all will be right in the crypto space. Well, we're there now and then some. Uh, speaking of things, writing from this time last week, listeners, we have ETH turning the ship around as well. 34.92 is where it was on the show last week. 36.29 coming in to start of the show today, up 137 handles. That also marks pretty much the high for the week. Of the low coming pretty much right after our show last week, 31 and about a half out there. So a little bit of range out there in the ETH market as well. Not enough to keep our seven-day vol afloat, though. We were at a 74 and a half on the show this time last week, 71 and a half. So coming in three points on the week. Going out a little bit further, going out 30 days, 72 and a half on the show last week, 74 and three quarters this week. So ticking up a little bit, up about two and a quarter points on the week. And going out all the way six months, 79 and a half on the show last week. And just like Bitcoin, also with an 80 handle, 80 and a half on the six-month vol. So longer term on the term structure, both Bitcoin and ETH looking juicy. 80 handle across the board out there. Let's go out to the skew. Last week, obviously, things were looking a little bit more dire. Negative nine and a half, almost a negative 10 on the weekly skew last week. Completely different story this week. All that's gone. We're back to the positive, positive two and a half. So Quite the swing on the week. A 30-day skew, same deal. It was almost negative six on the show last week, negative five and three quarters. Coming in and start of the show today, pretty much flat, slightly positive, up about half a point. 180-day uh, skew, we were positive seven and a half a week ago this week, positive six and a half. So coming in a little bit, but still looking biased to the upside, which is what we'd expect in longer-term skew. Again, hodlers are going to hodl. Listen, in terms of OIE, ticking up a little bit. Uh, two and a quarter million, roughly, actually 2.26 million contracts open on the call side on Deribit. That's up 120,000 from this time last week. The puts 1.19 million, up about 180,000. Again, that's going to go the way of the Dodo next week when March rolls off the board. 
ETH seems to get slaughtered every quarterly expiration. So those numbers probably going to fall off a cliff this time next week. Uh, what hasn't fallen off a cliff but has come in a little bit is Solana. 198.82 on the show last week, 192.10 this week, down about almost six and three quarters points. Again, threatening 200. That's just an insane level from where it was not too long ago out there. So Solana has been on the rampage. We're still messing around with maybe looking to add Solana back into the mix. So if that would intrigue you listeners, by all means, hit us up and let us know out there. We could do, let's see if we can run some quick numbers for you, courtesy of our friends out there in Amber Data. Last week, we had 10,500 puts open. This week, 10,400 puts. So not a huge evolution on the put front. Uh, The calls last week, the calls I expect to be the big driver as it is in most of these crypto names we had 15,000 calls open last week 20,500 this time last week again according to the latest data coming out of Darabit, courtesy of our friends over there at amber data let's see if we can dig up a little bit of volatility for you listeners there we go all right so vol now we actually have a 30-day number we can generate as well it's so new we can only do a seven day last week uh this time Last week, the seven-day vol was kind of crazy. Let's see if we can get that into a more meaningful number. Okay, we had 140 this time last week, 114 this time last week. So coming in a little bit, oh, about 26 points on the week. And we can now get some sort of semblance of a 30-day vol. Actually, the 30-day vol would be the 114. The seven-day vol would be 118. So a little bit frothier out there listening, but still... Uh, pretty juicy, all things considered. And again, can you blame that with all, with all the action going on out there in Solana right now? You knew it had to be triple digits. So 114 for your 30-day vol out there. Listen, let's look at some skew numbers really quickly. Then we'll get into some of the other altcoin universe right now. Seven-day skew looking pretty positive. Again, it was markedly negative on the show last week, negative 13 and a half. Now it is positive nine and a half. So quite the swing on the week. If we go a little bit farther out, let's go out all the way to 30-day. 30-day skew listeners, 18 and a quarter out there in the 30-day. So intriguing stuff out there in Solana. Again, as we start to see more flow build up out there, more OI, maybe expect to see a little bit more Solana repped here on the show again. Would that intrigue you? Hit us up. Let us know as we keep on rolling out there to the land of XRP. Are they getting the ghost back? Maybe a little bit. A little bit north of 60 cents on the show last week. 65 cents pretty much exactly this week's up about a nickel. Kind of back to where they were pretty much treading water for the better part of the last year. So it's hard to get too excited about that. But we'll see if they can maintain some upside over the next few weeks. A Doge, 14.2 cents last week. 18.1 cents. Up nearly 4 cents on the week. Hence, it's climb back to the number 8 spot. In our overall market cap listeners, Litecoin, 82 and a quarter last week, 90.65 this week, up about 8.40 on the week. Cardano, 65 cents last week, 66 cents this week's up about a penny. Uh, Polkadot, 9.78 last week, 9.72, so kind of treading water out there. And uh, Shiba getting a little bit frothier as well, a whopping 0.00026 this week. It's a 2.9. So Shiba Lambos, not quite yet, but maybe again, you could put a, a new hubcap. On that forthcoming Shiba Lambo, as we keep on rolling to a little bit of your crypto questions. You've got questions about crypto. Who doesn't? It's time to find out the answers to your crypto questions. All right, listeners, we got some hot questions of the week. Tearing up our inbox and indeed tearing up our socials over there at options on Twitter is the place to go to play along. In all of our questions of the week, last week we asked you, what is your primary reason for trading options? And again, this is not limited to crypto. This is across the board. We gave you three choices and the infamous other. Income, premium harvesting, speculation, protection or hedging, or other 54.2% of you going the premium harvesting route. Now I have to imagine that might be a little bit different in the crypto space, given all the SKU numbers we just broke down, the vol numbers. People buying a lot of premium in the crypto space, especially to the upside. So intriguing stuff. Speculation, 39.6. I have to imagine that might be number one in the crypto space. And then 6.3% bringing up the rare for protection slash hedging. How do you use 
your options. I'm curious, listen, did you vote in our poll? If not, get out there, add options. We got a hot new, actually, we got a double dose of questions of the week coming at you right now over there on our Twitter. First, as Q1 draws to a close, quite simply, which market segment are you the most excited about for the rest of the year? Gave you, again, three choices and the infamous other. Equities, crypto, volatility, or other. Already got some write-ins for fixed income, which I know the sexiest, the sexiest of all names out there. But uh, intriguing stuff nonetheless. Uh, right now, listeners, it's an exact tie. Crypto and volatility slugging it out neck and neck. No love for equities. That's kind of interesting. Maybe speaks to a little bit of where we are. Maybe some of you are just fatigued by this endless rally. You think you, it just can't continue. Uh, either way, you're looking for greener pastures elsewhere. 38.5% right now exactly tied between crypto and volatility. So... Very interesting. And a lot of you on this show actually like to merge those two, talking about crypto volatility. So a very intriguing. If you haven't voted yet, get over there. Add options is the place to go. 15.4% for equities, 7.7% for other. I know a lot of you are already chiming in for a little bit of the old fixed income. If you have other others, by all means, hit us up. Uh, let us know. And just for fun, we do have another, another more silly question of the week, kind of inspired by our discussion from our option block show that we just finished earlier today where we came down to the fact that, you know, Apple and Tesla are both trading at pretty much the exact same level right now, right around $170, which raises the infamous question, gun to your head, which one are you rather buying right now? And it was neck and neck, Apple and Tesla, pretty much ever since we posted this. And then now Apple starting to run away with it, listeners, with not quite two-thirds, but a little bit more than that, actually. 68.2% versus 31.8% for Tesla. Get over there, add options, make your voice heard on these and all of our questions of the week. All right, that's going to do it for the crypto rundown this week. Just the facts, man. Get you in, get you informed, get you on about your trading day. Uh, stay tuned throughout the rest of our trading week, our usual array of content. Coming back at you with the advisor's option tomorrow. I haven't hit you on that one in a little bit. That'll be fun with our buddy, Mr. Matt from Orats. Always great data out there with Mr. Matt. So stay tuned for that. Also have a great pro Q&A with our friends over there at Fidelity. If you have questions for them, they touch on crypto these days. So get on over there. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to get signed up for all that. If you join up for the end of the week, you also get your name entered into the hat for the next drawing for our now quite legendary pro trading crate. You want to get your hands on these. Each one bespoke. You never know what's going to come at you on the old pro trading crate, but they're all awesome. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. And stay tuned through the rest of our trading and indeed our content week until we're back again in two weeks. Another episode of the Crypto Rundown. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider.
Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. <laughs>